Hi guys, Gnemon here and welcome to 36th episode of Fun Farms. Today I would like to show you how you can build a convenient bucket of fish farm where you can in a little cramped but easy way bucket fishes at the rate up to 2500 fish in a bucket per hour. This means that you can get a shulker full of fishes in under a minute. So why fish? I don't know. You tell me why I mean so many fishes, but for whatever reason you need them, you, I got you covered. I mean, pufferfish is useful for traps and all, cheapo skulk sensor, player detector, they are interesting for sure, and tropical fish, having thousands of unique versions they appear in, makes for a great and pretty much a required decoration of any aquarium type feature you may have built. Puffer fish is also useful for brewing in its dead form, so you can skip the buckets just AFK without water here and just collect puffer fish directly with the hoppers for all your brewing needs. You might be able to use this contraption in the future to get new axolotls, but we don't know yet where they spawn and what conditions would they need for spawning, but the bucketing mechanic is the same as for other fish as well. Next question is where to build it? It depends on what do you want out of it. Since fish spawn in all oceans and rivers, but the fish composition changes from biome to biome, your location will determine what will you get. Obviously, most compelling reason to build a bucket of fish farm is to collect tropical fish and puffer fish, and for these the best would be a warm ocean location. We can see the ways for puffer fish is 15 and for tropical fish is 25, but tropical fish can spawn in packs of 8 and puffer fish 1 to 3, but regardless of that, there are other things like 90% of chance for tropical fish to spawn in one of the common types, which is, has its own spawning rules, so don't worry about it. Spawning of fish is unnecessarily complicated, but all in all, you'll get about 20% of puffer fish and 80% of tropical fish in a warm ocean. Another option is to maximize the variety of fish that you can get, and for that you would build a farm on a border between lukewarm ocean and a river biome. Unfortunately, warm oceans are always padded with lukewarm uh, oceans and never border with any other biome. Fun fact. But lukewarm oceans also spawn tropical fish, puffer fish, as well as cod, and in rivers we get the missing salmon. Believe it or not, but we will be only using 4 or 8 spawning columns for this farm, so as long as you can select these few columns of water on the biome boundary, you should all be fine. At least for now, this may change in the future with caves and cliffs, but right now biomes in the overworld are all flat, which means that you can use the entire column of blocks for our farm. The thing with lukewarm oceans is that the number of puffer fish to spawn here is greatly reduced comparing to warm oceans, so that might be your primary reason uh, you need this kind of farm for, so that would be a hard trade-off in this case to get the, all the variety of fish that you need to make. To bucket a fish in an automatic manner is actually not that difficult. In natural surroundings it's actually not that easy feat since if you are frantically right-clicking to get a fish in a bucket you can easily drop it off and onto the water by accident. But that's all because bucket will have different behaviors if you right click it with against an entity, a water block or any other block. But that can be very easily mitigated and finally you can't really show that in creative since bucket mechanics works very differently here. But if we only point towards a water source block with a bunch of fish in it and just hold right click will automatically scoop the water first and then followed by scooping the fish. And since we are not pointing the bucket against any other block, the fish will actually stay in our hand despite us keeping the mouse button pressed. At this point we could technically move to the side and just pointing onto an anthem frame place the bucket which we would have then shoot with a projectile to kick the bucket into the hopper, but that would add great complexity to the contraption that is not really needed. Alternatively, like in AFK clicker mob farms where we hold right click mouse button to eat and we click left mouse button to attack once in a while, we can do the same here just holding right click and periodically queue the holding item. This way we can simplify greatly recycling of buckets and make the contraption much simpler at the cost of running a clicker, assuming you really want to AFK here, which I highly doubt you really need to. So the bucketing method pretty much sussed out, the only thing left at this point is the fish spawner. 
The cool thing about fish spawning is unlike other mobs which automatically despawn and won't spawn more than 128 blocks away from the player, fish range is only 64 blocks, making so that our range will be much more practical. But also, if we AFK directly above the oceans, there will still be plenty of spaces in the for the other non-fish aquatic mobs to spawn within that 128 blocks range, meaning that we don't need to worry about dolphins or squids polluting our fish catcher. To find the perfect Y position above the ocean for the player to AFK is actually now really easy, even in vanilla. Here I have two blocks and this one is a little too low and this one is actually on perfect position. So we can figure out just by looking at our F3 menu now in single player, uh, which contains the mob caps. So as you can see, if I move up, all the fish despawn immediately, free up the mob cap down to zero, meaning that no fish can spawn in the oceans below, They're out of reach. And if I just step down, we almost immediately get all the fish to spawn back again. So on servers, you don't have that help. But if you run carpet, the same info is available in the water ambient mobs section in the mob cap logger, for example. And that will be your player position and you will build your farm around that. Now, the main problem with the fish is that they only spawn in pure water with a pure water block above them and any water log block below. And for the fishes, the flowing water has absolutely no effect, meaning that it's really difficult to move fishes around and control them. As soon as they are in water, they can do whatever they want. One way I've seen this attempted in the past is to mix bubble columns, which are non-spawnable, with water columns, hoping that the fish will get caught in the bubble columns and move up to the player. This does work, but it's very inconsistent and a little messy and we would need a lot more spawning columns to hope that the fishes would move around by themselves. But this was my initial idea, to just let them swim up to the player and just bob on the bubble columns, allowing the player to scoop them up. Alternatively, we can just let the fish spawn right above the player and just use the gravity to bring them down. And since there's no way to force fish out of the water, we can only bucket the water out of the fish, I guess. In that configuration, we are limited to only one row of spawning columns directly above the player area, but that's actually sufficient to collect, in this case, 1800 fish per hour with a mandatory pack spawning support here with the glass. Trust me, this really works, especially here. And that's actually really, really cool. Some obvious problems with this approach is we use tons of dispensers, but that's actually like three stacks or so, that's not a big deal. The water starts a little below the player closest spawning range, which is 24 blocks, and ends at 64, so there is uh, not that much space to play with. And as I said, we only have four columns to play in here, but that actually does the job quite nicely. However, dispensers can have this problem that when unloaded in an unexpected manner, they can lose their ticks and leave some water behind. It did happen to me once when I was testing this, but it only affected the four dispensers in the whole group. So you have to remember to keep an access to this place with a ladder or something like that to be able to go up and down in case something messes up and just fix those a few dispensers that lost their water. However, if you remember to turn off this farm properly every time you stop using it, that should just never happen. One thing that is actually really weird and interesting with this kind of approach when you scoop the water from underneath the fish is if the fish decides to swim up I guess the fish doesn't just, just recognize it's actually out of water anymore. And it does this weird floating flying movements, which is just very, very odd. Majority of the fish falls down as intended, but an odd one here and there just does that. It is the most elusive fish. Oh, fishy, fishy, fishy fish. That went with an eye. Well, I guess that's how it works. At the bottom we have to squeeze them into 2 by one space so we can just scoop those fishes automatically with a player. As I said, you could scoop them without the need of the auto clicker, just using the item frame for example, but that would be a little too expensive and not faster than this solution, despite the ability for us to accommodate much more spawning spaces, but it can be done. The reason for a 2x1 space is to keep the puffer fish at least a block away from the player. And these three blocks is actually max what the player can scoop the fishes from. So in case of the stationary spawner, redstone is relatively straightforward 
every time a player drops a bucket with a fish or without a fish, doesn't matter, it gets detected by the comparator and a new bucket gets dispensed to the player. And in case the storage gets full, this will stay permanently locked and just stop dispensing, which is really nice because you will not be wasting any buckets. And here we have an on-off switch for the farm, which just pulses the pistons here at the bottom to move the fishes into our 2x1 area and just cycles the water up at the top in an appropriate manner. So I really like this dispenser solution, it's actually really elegant with this wave of air just passing through our spawn column of water and the fish just dropping down. But a much more effective approach is actually by using pistons instead. And this is this one. What we are doing here, we are periodically pushing out everything from the water stream, water and fishes, everything into the drop zone. This allow us to double up on the spawning columns since now we can push from two sides. But this actually limits some of the spawning spaces. It's every nine blocks we have to lose these two spawning levels since no fish can spawn inside the warlock chest as well as right below them. But that's actually not a big deal. Some fishes will get caught on the chest, but they will be pushed out next time with a piston. Waterlock chests serve us here double purpose. First as a source of water, but also having mostly a full block hitbox that prevents fishes from successfully hiding in them, making so that we can always push them out. All in all, this looks a little bit more excessive compared to the dispenser solution, but actually is much cheaper and more reliable in comparison and allows us to increase spawn rates of fishes from 1800 to 2800 fish per hour. And from my testing, you can very reliably bucket a fish every 1.8 seconds, that would be your clicker setting to get 2000 fish per hour, but you can even go down to 1.4 seconds per click, bucketing about 2600 fish with some water buckets that you will see as well in the output. But if you just want to stay here for a few minutes to get a few boxes of fish, you can just queue right after when you get a fish in your bucket and you can just do it as fast as you want. One thing is a player that stays still will not be able to reach both sides of the block here since fish is actually very small. So you have to decide which corner of the block you want to skip. And fishes in that place will only act like as a pusher for the other fish, so that's not a big deal. And that's it guys for today, a relatively simple and fast bucket of fish farm that allows you to get very quickly all the fish that you may ever need in your fishy needs. Whether you want to fill up in an AFK fashion hundreds of chests with fish buckets or just stand for a few minutes to get a few shocker boxes of fish. And if you just remove all the water at the bottom, this will actually double up as a small AFK fish drop farm. So if you enjoyed the video, learned something new or just want to show me your appreciation, don't forget to leave me a like, comment in the comment section below and see you in the next one. Bye bye!